do you think that you would ever possibly in the future record an album or at least a single? I mean, you definitely. I would love to. What I would like to do is record a um, a uh, an album of poetry, and do my poems and sing my African songs on there. And then another thing I would love to do, I'm friends with a rapper named Azealia Banks. She's like the queen of rap. She's really, truly a genius. She's the best rapper we have. And um, I would love to, like, guest star on, like, one of her songs. Just say something like, you know, I love you, Azealia, or something on there. You know what I'm saying? Well, she, but she definitely, not, she definitely uh, loves to coll- collaborate. So if you just send her a tweet, I'm sure that she will get back to you on that, I think. Oh, no, think me and her are friends. No, we're friends. And um, I have hinted, but she hasn't said anything, so. Okay. Well, I mean, she, I, I know I said at the beginning of this interview that you've had some controversy connected to your name, but, I mean, that girl right there, I mean, I, I definitely I definitely know who she is. She's, <laughs> she's, she's always making headlines. I mean, actually right. come to think of it, if you two did a movie together, now that would be next level. <laughs> but now, I, I, I hate to funny. bring... I hate to bring it up, but speaking speaking of controversy, I did have a, a couple questions about the whole old Osama bin Laden thing, because oh, when fine. now I I did not understand how you guys met, etc. But I did some research actually last night and today. I um, kind of looked into the story, and unfortunately, you know, you were kind of forced into some things, kidnapped. So you see, I didn't know that when I first heard about it, because everybody right. gets it, everybody gets it wrong. But one of the right. very interesting, so super interesting things that I heard about your story is that Osama was, like, obsessed with Whitney Houston. So Right, he was. And Iman and Joya Roberts as well. But right. mainly Whitney Houston. Yeah, he really was. And me and her later became friends because of it. And, um, he, I mean, that's all I can tell you is that he loved and wanted and desired Whitney Houston really bad. Well, a, a really interesting question popped into my mind about that because I heard you say, I, I don't remember exactly where, but you said that he liked to watch the movie The Bodyguard, which starred Whitney and Kevin Costner, and he would want to watch that movie with you, and then I, I just thought of a random thought. <laughs> when he would have you watch that movie with him, did he ever try to act out scenes where you play the role of Whitney and he played the role of Kevin Costner? Well, what would happen would be, of course, sex, but it wasn't really um, stated that we were playing the role or anything, but, you know, it would end up going into different sex acts, like during the movie, you know what I mean? Oh. And, um you know, I don't know how much we can say on the radio, but, you know, oral well, you, sex you say while anything. he watched it, you know, that kind of stuff. And then, of course, complete sex afterwards, you know. And um, to him, I looked like her, which was really, um, you would have to see me in person because she said the same thing. She felt that I resembled her and that I, especially our voices, she thought we both had these, like, hoarse voices. And um, I could imitate her so good back then. I don't want to do it now, but I'm talking when we're speaking. We sound hoarse all the time, like we just woke up. And that's what she was telling me. And um, she was the sweetest person ever. You know, and I loved her because she called him Dracula. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just that's, thought that was so funny. That used to always make me feel better when she would call him Dracula. Right. Now... Did you view him in that way, like him being a a monster, or how did you personally perceive him as he somebody was, who he's, actually? He's he's probably the smartest man I've ever met. Um, yeah, he was a monster, and I was terrified. But at the same time, um, I felt sorry for him because he was so sick. <clears throat> but he was sick in a way that Americans wouldn't understand. You would really have to be, like, I am half Arab. I'm from North Africa originally, so you would have to be from the Arab-African world 
to really understand that kind of sickness. And it's just a sort of fanaticism, and it's about several things. It's not just religious fanaticism, but it's sexual fanaticism. For instance, the idea that black women aren't women and that their purpose on earth is to be used for sex and, you know, and that black men are like animals, you know, not even human. Um, well, did he ever say anything racist to you, like about black people being... Oh, yeah, all or... the time. Oh, yeah, he always said stuff. He said that when um, jihad wins and, you know, the world becomes Muslim, he... Uh, told me that black people will be exterminated and just some of the women kept for sex slaves. But he told me, you know, the majority of them because he said that our race is like rats. And that's what the black race was, according to him. It's just rats. And he had black friends. That was the thing. Was that so many of the men who worked for him were black men. And um, they knew all about this. They knew, and he talked about our hair. You know, he told me that um, our hair is disgusting, you know. Wow. That's very, very degrading. Now, I I know that this is completely off topic of that, but I actually had a question about the Middle East, and I actually saw something that you said on Twitter recently. You were talking about Palestine. What are your thoughts on Palestine? I am not for Palestine, I'm for Israel, and that's because, like I told you, the Arabs, including Sejil uh, Tatik, which is the Palestinians, the Sejil Tatik, and this just means like the, the ancient Palestinians who were bastards, they are outcasted people of Arabs themselves, and at the same time, they enslaved black Africans for 1,400 years. And so, you know, nobody talks about the fact that Palestine owned black slaves longer, three times longer than the United States. I mean, 1,400 years, that's 1,400 years. Um, Many black activists have went over there to fight for them and have been called a bead in the street, which means slave. And they're called heretic, which means nigger and just called, you know, all kind of racial things, and they just ignore it, um, all for this illusion that these are the nice brown people and the Jews are the white people. It's total, total camel crap. You know, the brown people, um, first of all, Palestinians are white. The leaders, um, they're still white people. It doesn't matter how much their skin has a tan or whatever. They hate blacks as deeply and as thoroughly as anybody who is white. And they have the history to prove it, and they still do it. And then there's other reasons. There's the way that women are treated in Palestinian society. They believe in um, Sharia law, and um, it's just awful what is done to women and to gay people. They throw homosexuals off buildings and stuff every week, like clockwork. Um, when I lived in Israel, women had full rights, gays had full rights, transsexuals had full rights. That shocked me because they were just walking around free, doing whatever they wanted. Israel paid for their hormone shots. So, you know, to see that going on and to see um, the freedom that people had in Israel and black people, of course, Israel has a huge black population which also gets ignored by black American activists. They want to focus on, oh, they threw out 2,000 black Muslims and ignore that Saudi Arabia threw 2 million Ethiopians out. 2 million at one time. And that's a real news story. 